Okay, this side is completed. Now I'm going to do the same thing from the back side. The depth is already set and correct, so I'll come in and at, until I touch the work and then dial it in 75 thousandths. Now I'm not going to show this because it's on the back side of the work and it's not going to show up anyway, plus it's uh, pretty much a repeat of the front. So I will do that off camera. Okay, all the milling has been completed. So we got one T-nut that's five inches long. And I checked the dimensions and it's pretty close. Like I told you, the, uh, it isn't very critical on something like this, but I, I went over and I did fit it into the table and, and it fitted nice into the T-slots. So next thing, I'm going to put some layout die on the top and I'm going to lay out both uh, the location of the holes and where I'm going to saw cut it. I have been busy doing a little layout work and just using uh, my six inch scale and, and my uh, brown and sharp scriber I laid out uh, these lines here on the center line one two three four five now that's where I'm going to drill this is waste stock out here the parallel railroad tracks here are uh, basically where I'm going to saw those are between the, the lines and there'll be a little bit of waste stock that, that's more than what I need for the saw curve but it allows me to probably belt sand them down to the line now I'm and uh, the center line I put on there with the height gauge however I'm going to do this on the milling machine using the digital readout and I will go along there and I'll find the center and I will uh, a center drill each one of those uh, holes and then I'll go back and drill them all five sixteenths and then I'm going to do the tapping in the bench vise. I've installed a center drill in the chuck and I've located this way onto my layout line so that's my first hole I'm going to center drill that hole and then I'm going to move it down seven eighths of an inch that's eight hundred and seventy five thousandths center drill the next one move it eight seventy five and so on five times And so on, and I'll work my way right down the row and do all five of them off camera. And now I'm ready to drill my 5 16 holes, five of them in a row. And notice that I removed the parallels because I'm going to drill all the way through. So I just tapped them out and they're out of there. I won't damage the parallel. I've already drilled the first hole. Now here's a tip for you. Buy yourself a set of stubby drill bits. This is a 5 16 stubby. So I don't have to drop the table way out of the way, which is really a nuisance. I've already drilled the first one, and I've moved it back using the digital readout, 875 thousandths, for this next one. And I'll go right down the line and uh, do the other ones. Uh, now, Remember I said I'm making uh, five of these instead of four. And one is a spare, like a spare tire in your car. Sometimes you never do use it, even in the lifetime of the car. But uh, let's say I broke off the tip of a, of a center drill. Uh, I could just discard that piece. And quite often you will do that uh, during your career. So that's why I go with the spare. And I will drill the rest right now. Now this step is optional. Fast forward if you don't like it. Before I tap these holes, I like to uh, take the clearance size, which is 3 8 I've got it in the drill press here, and drill uh, approximately an eighth inch deep or maybe a little bit deeper, as you can see that I did right there. And the purpose of that is that it allows me even a greater ability to, to tap straight so I don't ruin these in the very last step. Now yes, you could tap them on the drill or on the milling machine while you were at it, but I'm going to do it by hand, so that's why I'm doing that. And you say, well, that weakens this now, so uh, it might strip out. Well, remember, here's a standard 3/8 nut, and all you need is that thickness there of of thread for the full strength. Any 
uh, extra is uh, uh, superfluous. So I'm going to go ahead and drill the rest of those off camera. Then we're ready to tap. Before I start tapping, let me make a point here. <clears throat> it's been my experience with commercially made tap nuts. <clears throat> I just got a frog in my throat. That what they generally do is when they tap these, they don't uh, go all the way through. They leave a little bit of a, of a thread uh, near the end that is a, that will bind the screw so it won't go all the way through. Because as you tighten your work up, some you do not want the stud here or the, the threaded part to go all the way through, push against the bottom of the T-nut and possibly uh, damage or, or crack the casting. So uh, that's how they uh, go about that. This particular one here has been staked. See the little marks there? Such that the uh, stud will not go any farther in than, than that. You can see it hitting the bottom. But when I tap mine, I think I'll tap them just a little bit shy of, of uh, going through with my, uh, with my taper tap. So, in other words, instead of running it all the way through, like this, I'm just going to stop maybe about at that point, and then I'm going to see how far a 3 8 bolt goes in, and then I'll, I'll decide uh, how, how deep I want to go with that. So that's my next step. Now if you want to turn these into uh, these T-nuts into T-bolts, you can also use some threaded rod and then use uh, the permanent type of uh, Loctite that will not come out and uh, Loctite uh, some studs in there and you'll be making uh, T-bolts. I have already tapped one hole right here and I determined uh, by a little trial and error there that if I allow the tap to come out the bottom about a quarter inch it's uh, going to give me just the, the right depth of thread so that the bolt bottoms out approximately uh, when it comes to the bottom of the T-nuts rather than a totally through hole which I discussed a minute ago so and I will tap the other three. I should have drilled and tapped this one while I was at it, but I wasn't in the mood. But I took a file and uh, took all the burrs off the bottom. And then here's what I meant. When I screw this in by hand, it kind of abruptly stops right there, about flush. Again, that's optional. If you want them to go all the way through, go ahead with it. Now I'm going to go over to the bandsaw and I'm going to saw basically right between the lines there. I'm on the vertical metal cutting bandsaw. Now if you don't have one of these saws, make sure you get one. It's a mighty handy tool to have in the shop uh, in addition to your woodworking bandsaws. And always use a pusher block. Keep your fingers away from that blade. I've been sanding these down each time I cut one off because I got a long piece to hold on to so I don't burn my fingers or have the, the work go wacky on me or uh, and I can also keep it square against the miter gauge and I got this kind of reverse for, uh, for camera purposes but I'm just going to square the ends off and take it down to the line. sand the other end, uh, the short end, I got to do it uh, freehand. This is too short to use the miter gauge. Also I like to lay a board on there such that there's no chance of something getting wedged down in there. So this I can push all the way up against the belt and then I'm just freehanding it. But it'll get hotter than a pistol and I do have a, a layout line to follow. But I will have to cool it often. I took each and every one of the T-nuts and uh, deburred it, broke all the corners, softened the edges, etc., etc.
If I had a tumbling barrel, that would be the ideal way to do that. And there they are, the finished product, five of them. Six if I ever bothered to tap that and drill that one. Let's step over to the Duro drill press and check them out. And there we go, we got a perfect fit. The smallest T bolts I had in stock were were these, and I, they are a three eighths, but they don't begin to fit in there. And I would have to either grind these down or whatever, or, or mill them off. They might be hardened, but they didn't fit in there. However, that size fits in here. But uh, so now I got a set of T T nuts for this particular machine. Now I like this type of clamp. And that could be used to clamp uh, work. I've only got one of these. I need to buy some more. But of course this would have to be used in conjunction with threaded rod and a nut on the top rather than a bolt. And these are uh, can be adjusted to different heights. I also have some of these but most of these are way out of proportion and way too large the ones they use on the milling machine homemade clamps of any type uh, would be suitable too or sometimes we can clamp the work directly to the table though of course we don't ever want to drill into the table and this machine for some reason has survived for 50 years without anyone drilling a hole through there so I I rather cherish the table okay that completes uh, this job this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now